So I'm sure a lot of you probably remember the whole Pokemon Go craze that was in 2016 where literally everyone who had a smartphone was playing that game. And then after 2016, the game just kind of died. Like, to be honest, everyone stopped talking about it. Sure, they released some new Niantic, added more stuff to it. But the game just sort of had a drop in people playing it. And in 2018, I don't think anyone's playing it anymore. <laughs> At least in my life. I don't know anyone today who still plays Pokemon Go. So, I thought about it, and I wondered, hmm... What the hell happened to Pokemon Go? So in this video, I wanted to discuss just that. And because this is like a weird discussion for sort of format, I would really appreciate it if you shared your thoughts on this in the comments, and I'll try to apply back to you. And also keep in mind that these are my opinions, so let's just get straight into this. So for the people who somehow don't know what Pokemon Go is, basically what the concept of it was you would have your phone, and via augmented reality, your camera would be like display Pokemon and you would go out in the real world and you would look for Pokemon with your camera. Kind of like Pokemon Snap, but in a, in a phone sort of style. And it's more based on walking places. And it's not like a game that you move around like with the joystick or anything. You have to literally walk to these places. You have to walk around the entire globe and you have to look for Pokemon. Now, that sounds like a great concept, and it was. It was so innovative, and that's why everyone started playing it. I mean, to be honest, it was pretty cool to think about. Oh, I get to catch Pokemon in real life on my phone? Wow, what a great idea. And on top of that, Pokemon Go was free. So, as you can imagine, plenty of people were playing the game. I remember when Pokemon Go wasn't officially released in Canada, I managed to get it on my phone early by like changing my Android store to the US and I was walking around playing it and I remember like a guy in a car just drove past me said Pokemon Go yeah Pokemon Go yeah Pokemon Go and he, yeah everyone knew about it and he was just driving by and <laughs> it was probably the most awkward moment um, ever for me playing Pokemon Go but still a lot of people near me knew about the game, and it wasn't even out yet, so as you can imagine, a lot of people were excited for it. And when the game officially came out in Canada, everyone was playing it. Seriously, I don't know one person who had a, who had a phone who was not playing Pokemon Go. It was, the hype was there, everyone was trying to catch all the Pokemon, and to be honest, it started to become a bit of a... Like, it started to get out of control when people were literally dying on the news from Pokemon Go. If you don't know, literally people would stumble across dead bodies. They would get shot while playing Pokemon Go because they're going into unrestricted areas. And, or, I mean, restricted areas. And what's even worse is that people would, like, they would just, they would be looking at their phone. And they wouldn't be paying attention. And they, like, slip off a cliff. Like, wow, Pokemon Go caused so many deaths. I also saw something that it caused over a hundred thousand car accidents. So yeah, Pokemon Go, it was a fun game, but wow, it killed a lot of people. So everything sounds great, right? You know, Pokemon Go, you get to catch Pokemon in real life. The hype is there. Everyone's playing it. What could go wrong? Well, Niantic could go wrong. So if you don't know, Niantic was the developer of Pokemon Go. They're a, they were a small startup founded around eight years ago. And what they did was they kind of explored the entire idea of augmented reality in real life. I believe their first project was an app where it would, like, detect, like, for example, you would be able to see, like, you bring your phone and it would detect, like, the Big Big Ben in London. And it would tell you information about it. So that was interesting, but that was, like, sort of their whole idea. And then they started to go into the game category. And Nintendo caught on to them and eventually... Well, because of like a whole joke with Google about the whole Google Maps thing in 2014 on April 1st they, Everyone wanted to actually you know catch Pokemon via their Google Maps, so Nintendo reached out to Niantic they worked something out and They made Pokemon go and they released it and Everyone played it everyone was so excited for it because you got to catch Pokemon in real life but then as the days and the years went by 
there started to be a bit of a problem with Pokemon Go. And what was that tiny problem? Well, the problem was that the game didn't work. The servers for the game would crash, the game would be unreliable, and there would be so many bugs, you couldn't find Pokemon that well, and it was starting to become harder and harder to play. On top of that, Niantic was doing jack about it. They were not releasing new, they were not releasing bug fixes, well, they were, but they wouldn't say anything about what they were fixing, and they would never give release dates on what they're working on or when the bug's coming out, and sometimes they wouldn't even fix anything. So, Niantic's trying to fix the game by doing nothing. They're literally ignoring, they were ignoring their community, which was the Pokemon Go fan base, and that caused the, the first, that, that's what shot Pokemon Go in the foot. And that pissed off a lot of people. I personally didn't really have that many game crashes, but still, like, a lot of people were complaining that Niantic, they were doing nothing at all, like, barely anything. To fix the game, which that caused the game to dr have a little bit of a drop in player count. But it was still, like, on the top five games on the App Store and probably in the top ten on the Android Store. So, it it's still a big game. But then we reach our next problem. What happened with Pokemon Go? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Niantic, they took a turn for the worse. If you thought that they were already being dicks to the consumer, what they did was... They started to take down fan projects. And I'll get into what I mean by fan projects. So, similar to what Nintendo did with AM2R, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. What they would do is that because it was so hard to find Pokemon, people would create websites and little apps where you could help, that would help you find the location to these Pokemon. Let's say you're looking for, I don't know, uh, a Pidgey, I guess. The, the map would tell you, okay, a Pidgey is located downtown. So you have to go downtown, and that's the most popular places to find Pidgeys. And that's kind of the whole concept. And then they added more to it. I remember there was this one website that, like, a giant YouTuber made. And he, um, and what you could do is you could actually, like, calculate EVs and, like, calculate how strong Pokemon you could get. And this was back when, like, the gym system was starting to get in in introduced. So the game... Like, people were trying to fix the game because Niantic was doing nothing about it. But then what they did is Niantic took down the apps and the websites. They literally went to the creators of the websites and they sold, They told them to, they just told them to cease and desist. No, you cannot do that. And that basically made the game unusable because you don't know where these Pokemon are going to be and the whole finding the Pokemon system was broken so if you see a Pokemon it might actually be two miles away even though it looks like it's right in front of you so that was a problem but then another problem is that they tried to fix it I know right shocking Niantic actually tried to fix it they released a half-baked system that sort of kind of fixed it but then as time went on it actually broke the game more people were getting upset like, because, like, the game would have, like, okay, there's a Pidgey near you, and it's three steps away. But it's just, like, what does three steps mean? Like, three miles? Three minutes? Like, what does it mean? And nobody could figure it out. And you would maybe see a Pidgey that said it was one foot away, but it was actually, like, five feet away. It was so confusing. And it broke the game even more. And what that caused was less people playing it. Then what happened was Pokemon Go Fest in 2017. That was when the game basically, that was the last draw. So Pokemon Go Fest was sort of like E3 just for Pokemon Go. It was held in Illinois, Chicago of 2017. I don't think they're doing one this year. They might be doing one. And it would just be Niantic's little show where they would say, okay, here's what we're adding to Pokemon Go. And actually a lot of people went, believe it or not, just for like a mobile game that's free. A lot of people went to this convention. But, majority of them wanted refunds, and a lot of them, as you can see in this clip right here, as you can see, the, the developers at Niantic, they got booed when they came on stage, because everyone hated Niantic. They hated them because they broke the game that everyone loved. And on top of that, which people, I don't, I don't think it's exactly Nintendo's fault, but they could have done something. 
Nintendo wasn't saying anything about it. They weren't barely, they were just ignoring Pokemon Go. They were acting like it didn't exist. They were focusing on uh, more important things like, you know, developing the Switch, developing new games for the Wii U. That's what their priority was. And you can't really blame them for that because the, you have to, if you're developing a console like the Switch or any console or any game, it takes time. But Nintendo, you could have at least done something to step in and just like send a little letter to Niantic saying, can you fix the issues, please? That's all you had to do. And I'm 90% sure that they didn't do that, which boggles my mind, but that's not the main point of this. The main point is that Niantic kept screwing over the Pokemon Go fan base, and what that caused was less and less people to play it, which eventually led us to 2018. And in 2018, Pokemon Go reached a point where I think less than 5% of people who downloaded it were still playing it. So Pokemon Go was obviously on a downward slope. The game at in 2018 basically reached a flat line. The, the people still play it, but not nearly as much as people who played it back then. So what can we take from this? Well, what we can take from this is that when you give a company that doesn't have experience in managing a fan base like the Pokemon fan base, you're going to get a half-baked product. And that's what I think the problem was. What I think should have happened is that because Niantic seems to, you know, have some priorities mixed up, they either should have had a, like a change in leadership or... Nintendo should have outright bought them, in my opinion, what they should have done. I don't I don't know too much about businesses, but this is what I think they should have done. They should have bought Niantic, and then they should have turned Niantic into a um, like a little side part of Nintendo to develop just for Pokemon Go. And what that would have caused is that Nintendo wouldn't have to be involved. They could keep going with the Switch, they could keep developing it, but they could at least have an influence, a bigger influence on Niantic, because they're now a part of Nintendo. And they would be working on Pokemon Go. And Nintendo, if they listen to the fans, would be able to tell them, fix it. If that didn't happen, which that's not what happened. Niantic kept being a normal company, running themselves. They, like just what happened, they would end up just stumbling. And the whole game ended up collapsing. So that was the fate of Pokemon Go. And I assure you that today, if you look for people playing the game you're not going to find any people you may find some but i'm telling you pokemon go has i think it's time in the spotlight is over now what happened to pokemon go today well from what i can tell people still play it but pokemon go today is just a game that's slowly being it's not really being developed that much anymore it's just, you have to work with a somewhat half-baked gym system. Finding Pokemon is a bit of a trouble. And it's just, there's so many bugs that it's hard to work. And some on top of that, for me anyways, what I've noticed is actually, there appears to be like a stereotype attached to the game. Like, oh, you got your phone? You're playing Pokemon Go? Wow. Wow, what a, what a nerd. He's got his phone playing Pokemon Go. That's at least what I feel like people are stereotyping. And I hate stereotypes because... It makes people feel like they can't be themselves. And that's... This is getting into an entirely different topic. But, like, for example... I've been interested in making art. Like, drawing with Photoshop. But the problem is that I'm worried because... I have this part of me that's worried about being associated with a stereotype... That, in my mind, exists, but probably doesn't. I'm worried of being associated with someone who... I'm not saying that if you do this, it's bad. But I'm worried about being associated as someone who's... The, oh, you're an artist? Okay, you you instantly draw anime characters and all that. Like, that's not my that's not my style. So that's why I don't really want to be a part of that because I'm worried about being stereotyped. And that's what I that's like a very small reason of what I think killed Pokemon Go. But on top of Niantic ruining the game, the disconnect between the developers and the community, and the fact that people 
we're getting over the gimmick of just okay i'm wasting data all the time my my uh, data caps increasing okay i can't i can pay more i can't i can't keep playing this i'm gonna go bankrupt like that whole situation all forced the downfall of pokemon go and it's really sad because i feel like pokemon go had a lot more potential than it was given it got a lot in the end but to be honest i feel like it could have been much much more but anyways that's just my thoughts and i would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments if you did enjoy this longer sort of video i would appreciate it if you show this video on social media it's always up to you and i'll have my social medias linked in the description and see you